Earth joined forces. I can say for a fact that the majority of my audience, and I myself as well, have an attachment to LEGO and moreover LEGO Star Wars. It's been a timeless theme that has lasted over two decades now, and is the oldest to date licensed LEGO theme to exist. LEGO Star Wars has made quite a name in the toy market, and presents itself as completely incomparable to other toy companies who have acquired the license since the 1977 release of Star Wars A New Hope. Let's step back from all that for a moment though. I'm sure this is all exciting, but for today's video I'd like to cover a topic we just don't hear about too often. What was LEGO Star Wars like before 1999? It's important to get a feel for the situation that LEGO was in before they even considered acquiring the rights to a third party property. Actually, coinciding with the release of Star Wars in 1977, LEGO followed suit with their own space-themed sets. These sets had pretty elementary colors, ranging from bright blues, chalky yellows, and quite a surprising amount of grey, although it seemed like these building kits were centered around exploration more than conflict. Olker Christensen, the founder of LEGO, had imbued the stance into the company to place restrictions which prevent LEGO from releasing products that simulate real-world violence. With this change in mind, LEGO continued to release many more space exploration sets under different monikers, Blacktron, Ice Planet, Futron, Spirus, Insectoids, and the list goes on. The point is that these themes had inched LEGO further away from the passiveness of space exploration into more subtly weaponized structures. These themes managed to keep their target audience captive, for now. That could soon change if LEGO wasn't careful. Alien has left us with only one option, to kick his robots! LEGO has had several unofficial Star Wars inspired designs submitted to their catalog from the late 70s to the early 90s. Many of these submissions came from kids who were able to get their mocks featured in the LEGO catalog. This ATAT by Philip Dodge is astonishingly accurate considering the piece limitations of early LEGO. Also, uh, considering this catalog was published in 1982, Philip would be 52 years old by now. But I digress. These other submissions were equally as impressive, and I'm surprised that I could still find the perfect archives of these images. It's just a glimpse at the potential that LEGO Star Wars could possibly hold. Beginning in the summer of 1992, eight years before LEGO Star Wars would officially seek his debut, a prolific artist known under the pseudonym MSF began to replicate many of the scenes from the original trilogy. From the staunch sands of Tatooine to the frigid and bare landscapes of Hoth and lush forests of Endor, MSF attempted to recapture the magic of Star Wars through the limited types of pieces that predated the theme's existence. It's truly a strange yet surreal sight to see after realizing that these works were shockingly close to what the designers at LEGO released at launch. The Imperial Transport Shuttle, Millennium Falcon and even some characters like R2-D2 and C-3PO are still recognizable, even without much context. Although strangely, we wouldn't hear much from the artist MSF again after 1996, as activity would cease. Nonetheless, MSF is one of the most extensively documented LEGO Star Wars mock artists to exist. In 1998, Peter Yeo, the president of LEGO Company, realized that many other competitors in the toy space were acquiring third-party brand deals, while LEGO had an absence in this market space. In fact, their portfolio at the time had all been in-house original themes. Yeo recognized this opportunity and sought to acquire the brand deals with Lucasfilms after realizing that Star Wars Episode I would release the following year. Many executives and employees of the company expressed concerns about breaking from the tradition of creating original themes and how much of a risk it would impose on the company. In 1998, after much deliberation, LEGO finally reached an agreement with Lucasfilms acquiring the rights to making Star Wars themed products. With about 8 months of playtesting, consulting children and parents, as well as gathering more data about their target audience, the company would debut the Star Wars line in the summer of 1999, cementing itself as the first and most impactful collaborative brand deal with LEGO. 